I still work for Red Hat also. And thank for me to giving me this opportunity to, to, to speak here. Uh, during my free time, I spent my time uh, in a startup called Game Refinery, based in here in Helsinki. What we do, uh, we analyze mobile games, we analyze markets, and based on the features in the mobile games, currently only at App Store, uh, we give the games a score, how well they are implemented, how what features they uh, what features they uh, implement, how they are implemented. The higher the score is, the higher probability the game has to reach top 20, top 10, uh, top 5 in App Store, uh, top crossing ranks. And if you reach to top 20 uh, or top 10, you will be basically make a lot of money. So it might be one feature change from A to B might give you a lift to be better than your competitor and you make more money. Uh, that's about the company, what we do. Brief history about the stack that we had. We started, I didn't have time to do the timeline, actually I was vacation last week. Uh, we started, I was not there in yet, uh, with PHP and MySQL on Google Cloud. It was a demo. Uh, pilot, no, actually no real customers tested it. It didn't work. Then, uh, of course, then I, we moved in. I only do Java, so I rewrote it with Java. I moved to MongoDB, and we put it on OpenShift Online. So from the day one that we have run end user pilots and uh, production stuff, we have been in kind of sandbox. We have been using gears and cartridges, so, from the day zero, we have had a mindset that we are in sandbox. We are not using VMs, we are using some kind of pass or containers or gears. So, our code, code and the installation was pretty minimal. And we moved to OpenSift Online at the end of last year because uh, the new OpenSift Online, because the old one got end of life. It, the official end of life was August 2017, but we got some uh, four month extra time to move our workload. What we run actually, my had handwritten with pencil, with actually Apple Pen in the airplane. Uh, so what we run, we have services one, two, three, and four that we run. Those are, uh, are uh, we have made those services. I cannot say that they are microservices. They are kind of micro-ish services. We could easily split each of those services to smaller pieces, but we don't have to. It works. We have key clock running for SSO, and we have so fancy user interface with Angular that I don't even understand how it works. I do mainly the backend. Nowadays, I don't code that much. I mainly uh, concentrate the operations part, the not operations part, but how it runs, do we get correct alerts, the metrics, APM, and stuff like that. We have several different services, those red ones, that are external. Let's send grid, intercom, mm, new relic, a lot of other services that we integrate to. Because we don't have time or money to build everything ourselves. And for Amazon S3, we distribute all public static content. We don't want to get that workload on the open seat. Everything, uh, any images that we pull from App Store, uh, we either from directly from App Store or from S3, we with CloudFront, we distribute them. Uh, and then the MongoDB is not running on OpenShift. It's running on uh, MongoDB Atlas, their cloud offering. And it was, I think that one of the smartest move, moves that I did to move it outside of OpenShift. It worked fine with OpenShift, even in OpenShift 2, version of online, and in three, it worked fine. But I have to say that the MongoDB knows better than me how to run MongoDB. And it's a nice replica set. I can increase the machine sizes. I can create read-only replicas to regions. It's much easier than run it in OpenShift. And we have plain, we have virtual machine. We have one virtual machine running uh, 
on Amazon, running grown jobs, we pull off a lot of data and it is just more effective to run them. In a VM as a grown job, it's a plain Java process. We could run them as a jobs in OpenStreet Online, it's fine, but we like them uh, with grown jobs. I have a couple of key points that I would like to promote here. So first, externalize everything that you can from your application to secrets, config maps, uh, whatever you have in mind. All the certificates, all the configuration proper properties, either to config max maps or to database, so that you can have your container as an one single container built for dev, you test it, and then you deploy the same container. Everything else comes from outside. So, and this is the key point to have basically the immutability of your containers. And if you run your, uh, in OpenStreet Online, you have to provide your own uh, certificates. So if you use Lent Encrypt, you will have only 90 day uh, certificate lifetime. You have to all also create a process how you externalize your certificates and how you redeploy them. And this is one good thing. Have a champion in the house. It happened to me that in our company we have a, uh, four team develop uh, four persons in development team. You need to have a champion in the company in the team that knows the OpenShift. There is no point from the day zero to say everybody go to the OpenShift trainings and learn this stuff. Have a champion. Distribute the champion in different teams so that the champion is not part of one team, but it shares the knowledge how you should do things, how you should not do things. Uh, it was easy for us because I work for 9 to 5 with OpenShift, so it was easy for me to be a champion in, in, a, in the startup, in the game refinery. And that actually meant that it took half a day maybe day for our developers to figure out how things work, how they can get push and deploy. They didn't have to learn about OpenShift, but they started learning about the OpenShift bits and pieces when they needed to create a new service, create a new route or add a new uh, line to the config map. So they learned the OpenShift on the way. They didn't have a crash course to OpenShift. Now you have to do it like this, but they had a champion to learn, uh, basically holding the hand on the road. Deployment and delivery. This is basically the pipeline that we have. We build every, everything dynamically, we copy production database. No, no, it, it's not us. This is what we have. Uh, even that I see in my Red Hat uh, work, I see a nice stuff that companies do. For example, in our innovation labs, there are awesome pipelines and stuff. And I have a huge eagerness to basically, can I build these and do these? But if you don't need a huge pipeline for deployment or huge uh, automation pipeline, don't do it. If everything works fine, start from the easy stuff. Just use the, we use just plain source to image with the Git hook and we build it from there. For now, we don't need anything else. We deploy the staging environment automatically, every commit, and then from there, we, have, we need to have manual QA because the user interface is pretty hard, uh, hard to test automatically because you have to basically read the stuff and understand what the user interface does. And then when it's done, when it's verified, we promote the image to production. You don't have to be this kind of Netflix or uh, let's say whatever Uber. Just do what you have to do, get your code running and start from there. Like keep it simple. Uh, and don't overthink. Like I could, as I said, we have four micro-ish micro -ish services. I could split each of those services 
to 10 different smaller services. But I don't need that, need that because it works. It would be nice to have a smaller services, but we have actually one, currently one active backend developer and me doing like a 10% of the work managing those uh, four different uh, services that they've written in Java, uh, running on Wildfly, and it's working fine. So no need to split. And the user interface is a whole another story, it's so weird. And even that I just mentioned that keep it simple, you have to keep in mind that internet is global. Currently we run from Europe. Our data is in Europe. Uh, it's actually running on the OpenShift Online European region. Our MongoDB Atlas is in Europe. Everything is in Europe. We have customers from the US. We have some latency, but they are not that much annoyed yet. But we have to know that the code has to be and the application has to be so that we can easily make it accessible better from let's say Asia, APAC, and, uh, and the US. Op, uh, our solution for that is that that's why it was one uh, good choice is to move to MongoDB Atlas. We can e easily spread the database to have read-only replicas on regions. We can easily deploy the same code to APAC and US OpenShift Online versions and just have one global load balancer in front and we have local reads. So we can do that, but we haven't done it yet because we don't need to. So we only do what is necessary to basically get more customers and get more money. And one good choice was to use the MongoDB assets for us. Second one was to have an APM. Uh, so application performance monitoring to know what is happening. This is a, it's funny that New Relic is here. This is also New Relic, New Relic screenshots. But unless you have a view of what's happening, what the application is doing, uh, in the near future, Opposite Online will probably have an Istio, multi-tenant Istio, so that I can use Istio, uh, distributed tracing from there. But even so, uh, and also Prometheus, it's not yet there yet and the Hogular uh, hipster stack doesn't give that much uh, information. But even though I get Istio, you might be good to use some APM. Let's say there are, uh, there are different data, data doc, Neuralic, Dynatrace, multiple vendors to go inside your applications and know what's happening in your application. Even that your containers are stateless, there are still processes running in there and you need to know what's happening in the processes. Without the information what's happening, you don't know what uh, actions are slow, what you need to tune to make the application work better. And also, another one is this basically chat ops. Try to have some single, let's say, pane of glass that displays information, alerts, notifications. We get a slash, Slack message when one of our services is not running. And currently, if key clock goes, key clock goes down, then I have multiple messages there because the authentication doesn't work. I know that there is a company that does this a lot. Uh, they have, have a, not Slack, but similar. So there is no point to go in to the, let's say, I will not go to OpenStone Online and check, is my application running? I will see it from Slack. And sometimes I see it uh, from Slack that, okay, OpenShift Online was updated because service is down about 30 seconds. Because sometimes it happens that node goes down with geek log databases and that's bad. And always run two replicas, always, at least. They are most often running on different nodes. So during the updates, you will have one replica at least running. Never run on single replica. Sharing is caring. As Diane mentioned, common briefing. This same 
topic, I have written a blog post, blogopenshift.com. If you have something, you can all reach your local Red Hat team. We will guide you. You can also contribute there. Or you can Google OpenShift moving online. That's easier than the URL. Thank you.